Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, believe it or not, this is gonna be one of my shorter videos. We're just gonna to touch on a few topics today because we're gonna have the um, court case and I'm gonna to need to listen to all the streaming stuff. So there actually may be a couple days where I don't post anything or I may give you short updates of what's going on in court. I'll have to decide as we go along. So let's look at what we have for today and get on it, shall we? Let's go. The first thing I wanna do is clarify something that Megan said in the Oprah show and I didn't really catch it and I didn't understand it until now. So bear with me, watch this again. Not being titled in the same way that other grandchildren would be. You know, the so her complaint is that all of Catherine and William's children have HRH titles and her children do not. And she's complaining that it's unfair. Now, I recently received this letter, which explained to me what had happened because I, I totally missed it. You can freeze it to read it if you want, but essentially here's what it says, that the queen changed the rules of succession when William and Catherine were expecting their first child. So if it was a girl, she would not lose her place in the line of succession if a brother was born afterwards. But that created a big problem because in the 1917 letters patent, it says that the children of the monarch and the grandchildren of the monarch, if they're males, um, you know, it's the eldest son of the eldest son of the Prince of Wales gets the HRH, not the girls. So here's the hypothetical situation she gave me. Princess Charlotte had been born first, right? She would be the heir to the throne after her father, but only styled as Lady Charlotte. You know, then George comes and he's the eldest son of the eldest son and he would be Prince George, but not the heir to the throne. So to avoid the problem, the queen changed that part of the 1917 letters patent so that all of Prince William's children have the HRH. That way it didn't matter if they were boys or girls. That is why all of their children have the HRH, but those were not given to Meghan and Harry's children. Now I got it. I will also add that this was all done and easily verifiable before any children were born because Kate and Will didn't know what they were having. Thank you to Christina Walsh for writing to me and explaining it to me. Totally get it now. Okay, let's move on. I also wanna give you guys an update on what happened to Scobie's job. Apparently, Prince William complained to ITV that Omid Scobie made comments regarding William speaking about Harry's mental health issues. Omid apparently lied. What he said was incorrect, and William got attorneys involved, and so Omid lost his position. I think Scooby-Doo thought he was going to be like Meghan Markle and just spew lies and nobody was going to check him. Obviously, that uh, didn't work out for him. And thank you to Mandy Hayes for the clarification. The next subject we're going to talk about today is one that I touched on yesterday, where apparently Harry and Meghan are talking about going on some more fake royal tours, and they're talking about Australia and Japan. So I wanted to look at those two countries and their thoughts about these two. And we're going to start with Japan. Remember, this is a country that loves their royal family and they hate scandals. So this is what was on the news. Not long after the Oprah interview. ヒノガンボはまさにこれが自分が主演でいたかったのに結局上演にしかできないんですよ。だけどオプラウィンフリー出ることによってやっと自分が主演になれたっていう喜びがもう顔に出てるんですよ。王族の中でも結局メインには
元王族に入るべきの人ではないんですよ結論から言うと、ねえー、もうこの人はいつもその自分は被害者だってことを言うんですよねあのうまくいかないときは相手が悪いから私は悪くないという言い方なんですけれども、えー、その辺が厳しいですねメーガンさんにそういうわけでもないんですけどずっと真実を述べてるとこういうふうになってくるわけなんです、はい、So Japan is thoroughly unimpressed with them Now will they play the whole This is Diana's son card to get there? I think they might. Do the Japanese people want to shell out the money to pay for their security and host them when they're really not working members of the royal family? And does the Japanese royal family want to possibly offend the British royal family? I don't think so. I don't think Japan is going to want to host them. Now, for those of you who want to see the full video of that, I'm going to link it in the description box above so that you can watch it at your leisure. Now, let's talk about Australia. Let me start by saying that the second I said Australia, people were writing on my wall, don't wish that on us, we don't want them. Whereas somebody else said, I hope and pray they go there because they have no fans. So basically they'll be walking along empty streets. I could show you guys a gazillion video clips from the news of Australia, but you've already seen them because I'm constantly putting them in my videos. I don't believe that Australia wants them back. And once again, I think if they tried to go there, I think there would be a massive outcry from the citizens because why should they pay for their security? Once again, they're not working royals and they don't represent anybody and they don't want to upset. Australia doesn't want to upset the British royal family. I'll also say that it was after this tour that Harry said she was a bright shining star. Everybody just loved her. And then we went home and we realized they didn't care what a great job she did. And that's when everything changed. Again, I don't believe that. Moving on. By the way, did anybody else notice that when they took the obligatory photo, Megan made a point of putting herself completely separate from the group? I just thought that was kind of odd. Moving on, I have an observation. I posted this because somebody insinuated to me that Megan had already been taping and taking pictures because she knew when they left they were going to need material for Netflix. And I was like, surely she didn't take a tape recorder into the church with her. But then I see pictures like this where it's pretty obvious she has something under her dress. And considering what Harry just pulled the other day and Megan pulled with the, with the wires coming out and apparently they were caught in the UN building and thrown out. Um, yeah, I think she taped, and I'm sure that that will come to light when they release their Fly on the Wall documentary from Netflix. All right, moving on. I found this on Twitter. I just thought it was spot on, so of course I had to post it. I completely agree that we have all had enough of the misbehaving adult family members, and if the Queen and Charles want the family firm to continue, get control of these individuals, mainly Harry and Meghan, who are using to harass, defraud, assault, and annoy the rest of the planet. It's like, I personally feel that when they pulled everything from them in February or March when they did that, they should have pulled their titles at that time. But of course, now when they get removed, it'll fall right into their victim mentality, which I'm quite frankly sick of hearing. And I'm ending this video with the above quote, because let me tell you, that is so true. Absolutely. All right. Lots of information. Make sure to leave your comments below. And I really want to hear what you think about them possibly going to Australia and Japan on what they term as royal tours. What do you think about the back of Megan's dress? Do you think she was hiding something under there? And what do you guys think about that letter I got? Because for me, that just explained everything. So leave those comments below. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. You can email me. And for everyone who has donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much and have a great day.